Hi, I'm Sam Alkin. I'm an assistant professor in the Department of Food Science at Cornell University. I do a lot of work on food safety, dairy food safety, and we've been getting a lot of questions around COVID-19. So I'm here to help answer a few of those. Um, so how do we know for sure that COVID-19 is not transmitted through food? I hear people say that it is not foodborne, but I also hear that diarrhea is one symptom of COVID-19. So it does not make sense. Um, and even if it is not foodborne, can I get it through food packaging? Good question. Well, let's take a look at the virus. So this is a diagram of the anatomy of SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes COVID-19. You'll see those classical red spike proteins here. They may not be red in real life, but they, everyone displays them as red. And that's how the virus attaches to receptors that are found on some of our cells, primarily the epithelial cells and lungs. Uh, and then, right, it attaches the cell, injects its RNA, and then hijacks the metabolic of the machinery of the cell to make more virus. Now you'll notice that those spike proteins are embedded in a lipid membrane because SARS-CoV-2 is a lipid enveloped virus and that, that lipid membrane envelopes then a uh, protein capsid that then houses and protects the RNA. This is quite different than a lot of the foodborne viruses that we talk about all the time like norovirus. Norovirus is just a protein envelope virus. There's no lipid membrane, okay? So it's a very sturdy, whereas this lipid membrane is very susceptible to things like soaps, detergents, and to harsh environments like the acidic environment in our stomach. And now those environments of soaps disrupt that lipid membrane, which means that those spike proteins can no longer be folded the right way. They're not oriented the right way. And now the virus is inactivated. It can't then effectively infect you without those proteins being the right way. And so it messes it up. And that's why it doesn't pass well through the stomach and why it's not thought to be food borne. So here we are, mid late June. There are what, nearly eight and a half million reported cases of COVID-19 globally, more than two million here in the United States. So public health officials around the world have had a lot of opportunities to ask people questions, do contact tracing, and understand how someone who caught COVID-19 actually got it. Who were they in contact with? What were they eating? Where were they? What did they touch? And what they found through this, a lot of this epidemiological work is that it strongly suggests that the primary route of transmission is actually through respiratory droplets, right? That you and I let out when we talk, when we cough, when we laugh, when we sneeze, the bigger the droplet that comes out of our mouth, the more virus it contains if we're already infected with COVID-19 and are shedding it. But because it's so big, it then readily drops to the ground, right? Because of gravity. Now the smaller droplets, they may travel further, may stay in the air a little bit longer, but because they're smaller, they contain less virus. Now we don't quite know what the infectious dose of the virus is to cause COVID-19 yet, but you wanna be exposed to as little virus as possible. And so, right? If you're less than six feet than, from somebody, you're gonna be exposed to a lot of those big droplets that have a lot of virus. That's not good, you're probably gonna catch it. Um, now, there's no magic wall around six feet, all right? Uh, these, these respiratory droplets can travel around. And so, even if you're a little bit more than six feet, if you're around someone for a really long time that actually has COVID-19 and is shedding a uh, virus, then even then you're gonna get exposed to a lot of smaller respiratory droplets that contain the virus, but then that's prolonged amounts of time, which is why the recommendation is to avoid prolonged close contact. Now, theoretically, uh, COVID-19, the virus that causes it, could be transmitted through contaminated surfaces, but CDC put out a statement a couple of weeks ago that said it's not from what they found, not very easily transmitted through contact surfaces. That's because the series of events that would have to happen, right? Yes, somebody could theoretically sneeze and cough on something, but there aren't these people going around sneezing and coughing on everything. Really, what's probably gonna happen, someone's gonna sneeze or cough on their hand, they put up to their face, they're not thinking, touch something, right? Now, there's a transmission rate of the virus from your hand to another object, which is actually pretty low, right? So you may have sneezed a lot of virus, but the amount of virus that gets deposited on something you touch, like say a food package, 
or doorknob is going to be quite low. And then the person who comes along, right, that virus is eventually going to be dying off because it doesn't survive well in adverse environments. Someone comes along, touches that package. You're not going to get a lot of transmission from that package of the virus to your hand. And then wherever that virus landed on your hand, you've got to touch that particular spot to your face and then get it to a point where it can actually make it into one of your membranes, right? So through your nose or something like that. And that is a complicated series of events. And that's why we don't think, right? We it strongly suggest that COVID-19 is not readily transmitted through foodborne packages. And right, because of that, and what we know about the virus's survival in adverse environments is not associated with food, okay? That's why you should feel comfortable eating. And really, what we see when it comes to symptoms related to COVID-19, the primary ones are cough, a fever of greater than 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, chills, muscle pain, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, sore throat, loss of taste or smell, those are the main ones. Yes, occasionally there's reports of diarrhea, and we're still doing a lot of research, but what it looks like uh, might be causing that is that it's actually not because it's made it through our stomach and came in with the food, but because we, we now have a systemic infection of the virus that then is spreading through the bloodstream and then makes it way, its way into the intestines and then causes a problem down there. And this is not the first time we've seen viruses shed in the feces. The original SARS, that outbreak that happened in 2003, uh, that SARS virus uh, was also detected in feces, but we know it was not a foodborne transmitted virus. And so when we're talking about our food, COVID-19 not transmitted through food. So you know, with your necessary precautions, feel safe. Uh, to take a bite and not worry about COVID-19. Just make sure you're not eating that yummy burger around a bunch of other people close to you. So I hope that answers your question around COVID-19 and transmission of food. If you got more questions, feel free to submit. Thanks.